Okay, so if you're confused about this data processing uh, playground, then you are not alone. Um, let's go through this one. All right, so uh, in this playground, it's going to talk about uh, data processing, and it's also talking about like how humans are prone to error. So you might not always put um, the text in the same way. So if you're typing in an app, maybe you type it with a lowercase one time and an uppercase the next time. Um, but let's go ahead and, and get started with this. Uh, so uh, evidently, they, uh, they've created something called a tabulator. And uh, let's take a look at this tabulator thing. So I'm going to hold on the command key, click on it, and then jump to the definition just to look a little bit at it. All right, so it's a structure called tabulator, and it's got some variables. Uh, or it's got a variable called values, which contains an array of strings. And it's also got this function called increment count for value for each string. So it's going to increment the count for each of the strings. And then it's also got this thing called count. So it's not like a regular array where it just has count. Uh, it's going to count for each value. So evidently that function is going to count the number of times a string occurs. All right. So they've built this thing called tabulator. And uh, here they are using the tabulator thing to increment the count of, uh, I assume these are maybe movie titles or something. So uh, Ocean Express, the fourth time. So let's make this the fifth element, maybe. Fifth element. And uh, and so let's say someone else puts the fifth element in a, a second time. Um, so I'm going to copy this and paste it down here. We'll see how it works. Uh, and uh, let's give it a run. Uh, Ocean Express, fifth element, fourth time. Okay, great, great. Now, my question is this. If you put the lowercase f in here, is that considered a different thing? And the answer is yes. So it looks like there's the fifth element here, but also the lowercase fifth element over here. All right, good to know. Write a loop that iterates through the tabulated strings. All right, so well, that's a for loop it's looking for there. Um, all right, so for each of the title, basically each of the titles. Oh, it stopped. Uh-oh, <laughs> what's going on here? Oh no, I did not mean to start zooming into everything, although it's kind of fun. Uh, all right, so exit. Okay, <laughs> good to know. So somehow I, I accidentally started annotating. I think I got to change the settings on my uh, screencast-matic here so it stops doing quick key commands. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we're writing this for loop on the second page here. Um, and so it's going to be, it wants us to iterate through all the tabulated strings in tabulator values, it says. Okay, so let's do that for each, basically like each value in uh, tabulator.values, and then curly braces, and let's just print out something for each value here. So we could just print each value. Uh, I'm going to say... Uh, do something like this, each value is, and then throw each value in here. Something like that. Um, but it also wants us to print the count for each one. So like, that's a little confusing to me because usually like an array, you would count the array. So, but they're saying like the count of each time, amount of, they're, they're, they're saying use that tabulator function called count basically. So they what they're looking for is something like this. Um, and count is, and then tabulator dot count for value each value, yeah, something like that. Boom. So this is using their function called count that takes in the uh, value and counts how many times it exists. So here we go. It looks like it's working down there. Um, that's that page. A little confusing. It only gets more confusing from here. Let's go on to page three, counting the shows. So. Um, it's got this thing called random show data. And later it goes on to tell you there's actually this other thing called random show data large set. So there's this data. And if we look at the data, I definitely want to print it out and take a look at it. Print the data, random show data. Let's take a look at what it is. Uh, it's an array of strings. OK, fine. Uh, create a tabulator instance. We could do that. We're going to make it a variable because they want us to change it later. So I'm going to make it a tabulator of type. Um, 
tabulators. So I'm going to instantiate it. So creating a new tabulator here. Loop through the shows in random show data, incrementing the count for each one. All right, fine. So to loop through the shows, it wants us to do a for loop basically. So for each show in uh, random show data. So now we got each of these shows and it wants us to increment the count for each one. Now I, I was thinking, oh, okay, it just wants us to make a count, you know, but no, it, what it's trying to say is increment the count using the tabulator here. So um, tabulator dot increment count for value each show. That's what they're looking for. Uh, all right, fine. Now it says loop through those tallied shows because we use the tabulator there and um, loop through the tallied shows stored in the tabulator values and print the information from each one. So uh, fine, we'll just do what it says. For each uh, value this time, we'll call it a value this time, in uh, the tabulator values. So now we're going through each of these values and we're gonna print information from each one. And we'll um, print something out. Uh, so here's our print statement and we're gonna throw in the, the show and then throw the each value in there. So that's like kind of like the show title. For each show, uh, the show blank occurs and then how many times does it occur? And we're going to use the tabulator count for value again. This is a little confusing because this these are functions that Apple made for you, and it'd be more make more sense if it was a function you made for yourself. Um, but here we go. Down here it says the show unsure occurs one time. Now it says, all right, well, there's also this thing called random show data large set that contains a thousand survey results. Once you're satisfied that your code runs correctly, you can update your code to tabulate the values from that array instead. Um, all right, fine. I'm just going to copy this whole thing, basically. Uh, I'm not the tabulator. I'll leave the tabulator there. Yeah, no, I'll copy the tabulator too and make a different tabulator. Grab it all, Command C, Command V, and I'll make this tabulator too. And for each show and the, uh, not just random show data, but this is going to be the big show data. I forget what it's called. Show data large set. Okay. And, um, oh, did you see that? There's another one. Show. So show data with errors. I guess we'll get into that later. Uh, and then we're going to use tabulator two here to increment the count for each value in tabulator two. Then we'll change this to tabulator two also. Okay. So in here we go. Here's the big data set down here with 125 occurrences of Ocean Express. Um, very cool. Okay, so this is the large data set down here. The Streaming Plus conducted their first survey. Now it's time to process their results. The survey came in as survey data. Use the space below to tabulate the survey data and print the results. So we're going to use pretty much the same stuff that we, we did in the previous page. Create a tabulator instance, loop through the survey data, Incrementing the count. I mean, it's like this is like exactly the same as what we just did, right? So why are we doing it again? What is this survey data exactly? I'm going to print the survey data just to take a look at what it is. It's a lot of strings. Okay, fine. Survey data. We're going to... So it wants us to increment the count for each response. Well, that's just the tabulator dot increment count for each show, correct? Loop through the tallied shows stored in tabulator values, printing the information from each one. It's like exactly the same thing we did in the last page. Why are we doing it again? Okay. If you look at the output, you can see that some users made errors. They're pretty easy to spot because each error has a value count of one in the tabulator. Okay, let's take a look at the ones that say one. Be gone to the night instead of beyond the night. Okay, Ben Fath instead of beneath. One approach is cleaning these results <clears throat> to throw out the errors. If there are enough responses, not too many errors, it should still be useful information by throwing them out. 
You could find the errors by looking for values that have been tallied just once, but that technique won't work if multiple people make the same error, like t instead of the. You could use the contains method of the array to check whether a given show name is valid. Using the tabulator you created above, add a loop below that prints out only valid results by checking the tabulator values against the show catalog. Then add a second loop that only prints the errors. Finally, print the total number of errors in the survey data. All right. So up here, we've already got our tabulated values. And, and down here, it wants us to loop through those tabulated values and only print accounts that are contained in the show catalog. So for each uh, value in the tabulator.values, for each of those values, we're going to check to see if the show catalog dot contains the element, the element being the string, so that each value, if it contains each value, then we can print out that show. Something like, oops, something like this. Uh, so each value, we're going to print each value. That's the one that's contained. And then we're going to add the count. So then here we're going to tabulator account for value is each value. Something like that. Okay, cool. So now it's checking to see if it exists and you'll see all those little, little ones are gone. Here are the little ones here. Uh, fine. I create a variable to keep count of the errors. All right, so variable error count, something like that, equals zero. Uh, loop through all the, here's the header they're talking about. Loop through all the tabulator values. Okay. We have to do this assignment just like one little step at a time or I get like pretty confused. So for each show, in the tabulator values. Okay, if a value is not contained in show catalog, so if it is contained, so if show catalog, oops, if show catalog dot contains the element, so the element being each show, so this is if it does contain something. And if you want to say if it does not contain something, then you put the exclamation point in front of it. That means it does not. So now it's saying if a value is not contained in the show catalog, then what? Then increment the error count and print it. Increment the error count. That is, uh, you could do that by just saying each or the error count equals error count plus one. That's the easy way. Uh, the other way you can do that is plus, you can do plus equals one, same thing. Um, and then print it, print uh, errors are at, and I'll print out error count, something like that. There we go. Do, 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 do. Errors at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there we go. Print the error count. There it is. It's printed right there. Um, awesome. So that's this page. <laughs> Let's uh, stop here, pause, ask me any questions you need, and we'll continue on page five. All right. So some of those errors seem to be simple capitalization mistakes. You've already seen a way to solve those problems in the question about app. Just use them, use that lowercase thing. So it's a lowercase function like this. So create a new catalog containing lowercase versions of all the shows. So all the shows, where are all the shows contained? Uh, oh, I guess there's something called the show catalog still, maybe. Does the show catalog still exist? Okay, there's the show catalog. Um, and so to make a lowercase version of show catalog, you could do... Uh, so lowercase show catalog is going to be of type uh, a string, an array of strings, basically. And let's just start it out with an empty array like that. Um, so then for all the shows in the show catalog, we got to lowercase each one of them, unfortunately. Um, you could maybe do a fancy extension for a uh, array of strings. That'd be cool. Uh, but for now, for, for each show in the uh, show catalog. There's other ways to do this as well. Like uh, 
but um, more efficient ways, for instance, like map, filter, reduce, those kinds of things. But uh, whatever. For now, we'll just for, for loop because that's what it's looking for. So the lowercase catalog then, so lowercase show catalog, we're going to append uh, a new element, and the new element is going to be each show uh, lowercase. It's kind of cool, but it doesn't really preserve the original case as well. So, but that's, I'm not going to worry about that. Um, all right, so here's their dumb header. Um, tabulator stuff again. Fine. Uh, variable tabulator. Assign it to tabulator. Loop through survey data. Make a lowercase version of each of the values, then increment its count. Did we not just do that? up here oh i see we did show catalog up here we didn't do survey data <sighs> why is it making us do this like multiple times okay i'm not going to worry about it so for each data in survey data i see so now we're checking to see so this is our catalog of shows up here this is how many shows we actually have in our that that are acceptable, and now it's saying, "Fine, this is the survey data, not not the show catalog. This is the catalog of movies we have like on the shelf, basically, and this is the data set that we're getting in." So now it's saying, for each of the shows that comes in, each show that comes into the with the survey data, we'll check to see if the lowercase show if the lowercase show catalog contains the element that's lowercase, the show contains the sh show, each show. Do we have to check if it's yeah, a lowercase version also? Lowercase. Print. Okay. That matched. Or that, okay, that show is in our collection. So I'm going to say that show blank is in our collection. And then I'll put the each show in there. I'm going to put each show dot lowercase actually. Just so I'm comparing apples to apples. Yep. Okay, great. So here it's kind of working down here. Loop through all the tabular values, print only those that are contained in the lowercase version of the show catalog. Okay, that's what we kind of did there. Uh, all right, now it wants us to do the error count. So make a variable error count, assign it to zero. Again, it's it's just it's a little bit repetitive, but I guess that we're learning. Loop through all tabulator values. So for each show in tabulator dot values, then what does it want us to do? It wants us to check if a value is not contained again. So if we look at our previous page, we, we kind of remember that uh, first we checked to see if it was contained, and then we just put an exclamation point in front of it. So if uh, lowercase show catalog contains the element uh, each show, and then to check if it's not contained, then you just throw the exclamation point in front of that. And then we can just take our error count and then do the plus equals one. And then let's print the show. And let's also print the error count. Okay. You should see the error go from 13 down to 3. Let's see here. So I think the problem is we were correcting their error for them. We were like correcting the error by uh, lower casing the show. And um, it doesn't want us to correct their error. It wanted. All right, let's take a look here. So uh, up here at the top, we've got our show catalog. We're making a lowercase show catalog 
we're going through, we're saying for each show in the show catalog, append the lowercase version of the show catalog, right? That happens 20 times. Then we're getting down here and we're saying, all right, we got a tabulator now for each show in that survey data. Check if the lowercase show catalog. Oh, wait a second. We're not doing our tabulator here. Okay, this is kind of wrong here. So what they're saying is make a lowercase version and increment the count using the tabulator. So what I actually got to do here is uh, not that. I, I've got to uh, on around line 20, not or 30 something. So uh, tabulation for, for data. So I got to take the tabulator and then I got to increment count like it asked for. Increment the count for the value of each show. Okay, that's probably where my problem was. Okay, so now we've got the tabulator. We're incrementing the count. Loop through all the tabulator values. Now we got to loop through all the tabulator values and print only those that are contained. And uh, that's kind of what we're doing down here, right? We're loop, looping through all the tabulator values right here. Loop through all the tabulated values here. Print only those that are contained in the lowercase version. Hmm. So uh, that's not really working perfectly yet because let's see here. I've got uh, error count of evidently my error count is at thirty. It's just uh, it's counting everything. So let's take a look at this a little closer. So. Lowercase show catalog. We're appending each title lowercase. Printing the header, which is pretty much nothing. Uh, we're creating a tabulator. And then we're going to each show in the survey data. And we're incrementing the count for the value each show. Oh, wait a second. Uh, make a lowercase version of each value. So each show dot lowercase. There it is. Okay. Now what? Now what? Now down to three. Okay. Three errors. Do you see that? Okay. So we loop through the survey data, make a lowercase version of each value, and then increment its count. Okay. Gotcha. Then down here, we're counting to see the if it's contained. Okay. Whew. Tricky. Next page, next page. Let's keep it moving here. Third party code. All right, third party code. Let's see, page here, page six, I believe. We're on page six of 11. Okay, fine. Um, this is kind of funny because it's like, uh, if you're using someone else's code, make sure the code's got a license that allows you to use it. If the code's got a license that allows you to use it, cite the source, you know, if you, if you need to. And then down here, it's like, it's unlikely you'll understand the code below, but you don't need to know it. So that's kind of rude, but. I don't know. I see. So we've got this function. We've got a bunch of for loops. This looks highly inefficient, uh, but whatever. We're going to use it. And um, to edit the distance between the cat and the cake, uh, whatever that means, let's let's try editing a distance from um, I don't know, cow and uh, a pig. I wonder if it's just counting the letters, basically. It's three. What about editing the distance from uh, something like this to something like this? 24. Yeah, so it's got to do with the amount of characters. All right, so we did try to edit it. Great. On to the next page. Spelling errors. So by using the existing edit distance algorithm as the basis of your code to detect spelling errors, Rather than coming up with your own, you'll benefit from reduced development time. So they're going to try to use that last little uh, API, the little spelling error thing, or the distance thing. So like this on this previous page, we're going to try to use this. So like, for instance, I wonder if we, uh, I'm going to command C, command V, uh, and go from cow to pow. 
and see if the distance is like one or something like that. Yeah, the distance is one. So it's like one letter difference between these two. Um, I see. So it wants to use that to check whether or not someone just spelled something wrong. Okay, so it's kind of already started this for us, but uh, we have to add some stuff down in here, it looks like. So first it looks through the array to find the closest match. It initializes the best edit distance, initializes the index of the best match to the first index, initialize the index of the best match to the first index, and then for the index for i in 0 through the count of potential matches, get the potential match at index i. Okay, that's tricky stuff. Um, but basically what it's saying is we're going to make something called the potential match. Let the potential match and equal it to uh, index i. So uh, the potential matches at the index i. Okay, that's what it's saying there. So here's the potential match. Then get the edit distance from the string to the potential match. So now we're going to use that like edit distance thing. Um, so uh, we'll get the distance. Distance from match and assign it to edit distance. Oops, not bets, edit distance. Ed, edit distance from. So the one from is coming from the uh, string. So the string is uh, where? Where's the string? Oh, the string is the closest match for up here. So there's the string. So from the string to the potential match, right? Not the potential matches, that's the array up here, but the potential match right here that we just kind of assigned. All right, so that's getting the distance, right? Now, if the distance calculated above is better than the best edit distance, oh gosh, okay, fine. Update the best edit distance and match. Okay, that's tricky stuff. All right, so if the distance above, if the distance calculated above, so if distance from the match, is less than less than the best edit distance then the best match is equal to equal to i the best edit distance is then equal to um, the distance from match. The best match index. So the index of the best match in the array. So this index here is this. Return the best potential index match okay so we're not actually getting the string we're getting the index of the string so we're getting like where it's located um crazy stuff all right fine now what do you want book the uh, lowercase version has already been created uh they're printing out a header there create a tabulator we it's like the easiest thing we've done all day let uh so i'm sorry var tabulator assign it to tabulator loop through the survey data, make a lowercase version of each value. Okay. So um, there's a lowercase show. Um, if the catalog contains the lower show, increment the count. And X, I'm going to put this up here so I remember what I'm doing. If the catalog, if, so increment the count. So the count is on the tabulator, tabulator dot increment count for value, and then it's going to increment it for the lower show, lowercase show. Yeah, or else let's uh, just bail out and um, 
Otherwise, it says find the closest match and increment the count for that. Interesting. Okay, so it's just assuming that we're we're going for something that exists. So let's paste that in there. Otherwise, find the closest match for the value and increment the count for that. So to find the closest match, that's our closest match function that we just made up here, right? Didn't we just make like a crazy function called closest match? Okay, yeah. And we're just finding the index of the closest match for, with that function. So let the um, index of closest match equal closest match for which one for, it's for the lower show lowercase show from the array the lowercase catalog lowercase show catalog so now we're getting the index there we're not using the index yet wait a second i want to print this print the index of the closest match is it getting the index or is it getting the actual show It looks like it's printing the actual show. Why does it say the index here? It's returning a string. I see. It's not returning the best match index. It's returning the potential matches. Here's here we're using the index here. Best match index is, is goes in here, and then it returns the actual string up here. Okay, so I was wrong. I was wrong. So this is not the index of the closest match. This is actually the closest match. Closest match, closest match. And uh, then it wants us to increment the count. So find the closest match and increment the count for that. The count is in the tabulator. Increment the count for the value. Closest match. Okay, so then I want to print the closest match and uh, the show. I'd like to see them both. Like, you know, let's see what they're both looking like. So the actual actual show or show entered is here. And then the closest match. Closest match is here. All right, so the closest match is here, and the show entered is each show. Oh, I guess I can't call this closest match because show found, because we already called that function closest match, so show found. That function is called closest match, so my variable shouldn't be the same. Uh, let's see here. Show found, show found, show found. Okay. Cool. Show entered the ransom project, closest match the ransom project. Marginalized, sh closest match marginalized. Great. It's actually working pretty well. I'm going to make my own data here. So I'm going to make uh, Dave's data. And uh, and then I want to loop through that. I just want to see if if it really works. So so maybe instead of marginalized, we'll call it margarine or something. Marginalized, something like that. And this is Dave's data now. And I'm just kind of curious if I spell it really wrong, then will it actually work? Will it find marginalized for that? You show entered marginalized, closest match marginalized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spelled it wrong. So marginalized, not margin. So if I put margin, something like that, is it still going to work? Let's see how far I can go. Yeah, it still finds it. Very cool. I like this. Okay. Uh, let's uh, comment out Dave's data. Switch this back to survey data. And uh, keep moving forward here. 
So now it wants us to loop through all the tabulator values, print only those that are contained in the lowercase version of the show catalog. Oi, okay, fine. Um, for each show and tabulator values, if the, uh, so it says if the lowercase version, if uh, lowercase catalog contains, <clears throat> And the element is each show. Then it wants us to print out something. We're printing here. Print. Well, let's print something like. Uh, there you go. There's our count down there. Cool. Um, create a variable to keep count of the errors. Loop through all the tabulator values. If a value is not contained in the lowercase show catalog, increment the error count, print it. Okay, so what it's looking for there is something something like this. For each show in the tabulator values, if it's not contained, increment the error count, print it. Actually wants us to print the error count also at the end here. So uh, print. Errors are at boop, boop, boop. And um, I guess that would be the error count that we just made. So I don't know why it's saying errors are at zero. That's interesting. Oh, I guess errors are at zero because we are, um, uh, because it can keep finding, it keeps finding everything. It's not actually getting here because uh, we're using our uh, fancy uh, function to find the closest match. Oh, very cool. All right, I'm going to stop it here and uh, maybe we'll do part two of this assignment.